All righty, we're going to take you out and cook inlet here. We're leaving the, the Kenai side. This is before they ever built the Nikiski docks. There was nothing on the Kenai side at this point. And here's a exploration drill rig. They can pick this one up and move it around. Uh, we're on our way on out to the construction site of a new platform. This is one of the platforms that we built previously. Um, it's under production. The flare tube is going, so they're in. They are in some sort of production. Uh, you can see the drill rigs up on top. I'm not sure which ones these are. Baker was one of the first that they built. I think that's the one that they had the explosion on and blew a corner. Here we are. We're still getting ready to build another platform now. That is the Derrick Barge Number no. 7 by uh, J. Ray McDermott. This uh, is what we call the jacket. This is floated into position and uh, turned upside down, so to speak. And This is up on top. This is Kenny Getz uh, walking along. And um, I don't know. It seems like it's a little dark. I thought it was a little nicer day today, but who knows. This is... This is just showing you some of the dimensions of this. He's climbing down these ladders. This is going down the gang planks onto the work barge. Now this is up on top and we're getting ready to hammer in some piling. Now this is one of the biggest hammers in the world. I wish I had a rigger here that could tell you just how big this is. These are steam hammers and uh, you can kind of see it going down here. Um, we dry, these go, I don't know, a couple hundred feet into the ground underneath the inlet. Uh, this shows the tide running. This is what, uh, what you're working over all the time. This is how the tide runs. And this, this is kind of a stormy day. And this is one of our uh, safety crew boats. We have, to, under our laws, we have to have a crew boat standing by these operations all the time. If anybody ever fell in. Uh, well, anyway, that's Roger Jacobson down there just coming out of the water. Uh, he was certainly one of the premier divers uh, back in those days. And and he, he owned active divers and... Uh, he did very well for a young guy up here. These are beluga whales. Uh, when we'd see them coming in in the summertime, we hadn't seen them in a long time. They were like white caps out on the horizon. They were, it was just part of our, what we saw. Now this, this is a barge load of piling coming in and uh, we're offloading it. And these are what we put in the ground to hold this jacket in place. And here we are stabbing some more piling. Um, I think I see Blackie Rasmussen up there and uh, who else? There's Wes BG, there's Don Brown, the electrician. Um, I can recognize some of these guys and there on the left that's me. I only had these pictures taken just to show you that I actually did get out there and I that was there and did something. Oh, uh, that's what I looked like 40 years ago, or whenever it was, 30 years ago. And here we are, we're double jointing, we're welding these sections. These particular sections right here, the, the walls was two and three quarter inches thick. Uh, there was only two platforms out there with that thick a wall, the Dolly Barden and the Grayling. Uh, now this is a water jet. The jacket wasn't f setting level on the bottom down there. And we built up this water jet. And what we're going to do is lower it down and suck gravel from around the leg of a jacket. And we're going to try to let it sink down a little bit and level up this entire jacket. Uh, 
I, that's, I wish I could think of the, could see these rigors well enough to remember these names for you. Some I forgot. Uh, I didn't, that's, I think that might be Bob Rasmussen on the left there. So here we are, we're jetting off the bottom, trying to lower this one leg. And this, this went on for several days, really. And uh, you can see gravel and rocks coming up. And here's, here's one of our, our lifeboats, and it's a comms. This is a real calm day, so I, I expect we're going to lift something. Um, hmm. Boy, this, this really does seem in the shadows a lot. That's by uh, George Roberts right there, and I believe I've seen uh, Dick Belak on the left in the background. That's Kenny... Uh, uh, Kenny Coochie, my word, uh, and you spring this on me, uh, I, I'm not quick on the memory here. And I believe I asked uh, Gary Sandstrom, I think he said this boom was uh, 220 feet to the, probably the jib. I don't know what it is to the main block. But that main block, Bob Rasmussen told me, was a 24-part inch and an eighth line. And we could pick and swing I know one of our loads was at least 175 ton, and we could pick and swing, and maybe more. I, I don't know. I wish I had a rigger. Uh, anyway, that is uh, Jimmy Foster in the off in those uh, coveralls on the left. I think I see Roy Johnson. That's Roy Johnson in the middle, and the riggers are up to something. This guy died this p next winter under uh, some little unusual circumstances. There's a story there, too, I think. Uh, we had two Jimmy Fosters, and that's one. Uh, here's some of the... That was uh, Fred Rector right there. Uh, I believe these are... I think that might be Dick Belak. Or it might be Kenny. I think that was uh, Kenny Coochie. Now, here they're bringing some uh, sections in. And uh, our, our crane could take th these sections and pick, pick them up and set them up in the air, I don't know just how far, 50, 60, 75 feet, uh, 175 ton. Uh, you're talking a big stuff. And these picks and these loads are out of sight uh, of the crane operator. And you see those, there's, well, there's two lines from the crane going up there. Those are tugger lines on the right, lower right. Those are tugger lines to stabilize the load. I believe that's Leo Neal. Uh, he was a rigging foreman. But anyway, when, when it's out of sight like that, they have to be in radio contact with the crane operator, giving them instructions. And uh, there's, a, there's a safety boat standing off in case there's any accidents. And uh, there, there was at least one major accident out there, and a, a number of people got hurt. Um, these are just some of the tugs. When I mean, you should see that many tugs standing around, we're in the middle of a pick. Uh, we always have to have one there. But... Uh, this, this is when things could go wrong. And those holes have to sit and line up on, on the top of the jacket in that particular case. This, isn't a very, this one doesn't have to be picked very high, but some of our picks were pretty high. We have to wait till high tide. We start, we, we'd start a, a pick about maybe two hours before high tide and hope to be done by, you'd better be done on some of those picks, you better be done because you have to release it in some cases if it's too high. You have to release it. Otherwise, you're going to lose boom. You, you run out of distance if the tide, if the tide drops and, the, and you can't reach. So this is uh, 
my old trapping partner, Gene Lanzaro, he was a charter member of 2520. And this is the, he's just showing you the size of some of these shackles. That's me in the center, that's Roy Johnson in the front, and, uh, and that's, well, okay, now that's uh, Fred Rector there. I see, that's me going at the top of the ladder now. Uh, and this is just showing the, the tide running at the, on the edge of the barge. This is showing the main block running up the, looking up the, there's Kenny, Kenny Getz and uh, Dick Belak. And this particular pick here was the living quarters uh, for the people that uh, work and live up there. On top of the living quarters was a uh, helicopter pad. So that's what you're looking at right here. This was a full, that's three, three, store, three floors of living quarters plus the kitchen, plus the, plus the heliport deck up on top. We picked that, I, th I don't know if that was the one, but 175 ton, and you place that, I don't know how high, 50, 60, 70 feet in the air, something. Uh, but the whole thing was uh, very impressive and here it comes a lot of the these these platforms back then a lot of them were fabricated in um, Japan uh, at least the jackets were I'm not sure where lots where it all was but uh, Japan was involved in a lot of it and that round yeah no, oh, yeah okay there's the crane operator and you couldn't quite see them, but there's a um, way down on the left, you can see two little spider web lines going up. Those, and on the bottom there, those go to air tuggers on each side of that crane boom. And that stabilizes, and there's a min, um, one man on each side with radio contact and stabilizing that load. And here's the men up on top. Uh, they're watching and giving instructions. Those platforms have two unit cranes up on top. This is what they will use later on after we leave. That's George Roberts getting ready to burn something. That's Kenny Getz out there. He's hanging out there. He's got nothing but water under him. He was, he was a good old boy. He, Kenny gets his long gone now, too. Over here, this is, uh, that's uh, Ed Rector. Uh, Ed Rector uh, is living down the States now. And this is one of the cranes that will stay on the platform. This is how things get on and off the platform after we leave. Um, well, this... This just shows a little stormy day. We're near the end of this particular little clip. But this is what we worked on and over out in the inlet. And this is how some of these platforms got where they are today. So um, anyway, this uh, is kind of kind of the end of a day. And it's kind of the end of this particular little short film clip. So I just hope you liked it.